Here are some tips for the gradient tool you may like. The gradient tool can almost be applied to any object in Affinity. You can apply it to a curve or vector objects, including text. But it can also be applied to image layers. When applied to image layers, it will recolor the image with the gradient. If you accidentally use the gradient on an image or change your mind and want to remove it, make sure the gradient tool is selected and the image layer. From the toolbar, set the time to none and the gradient is gone. The gradient tool is also a great tool for a fill layer. Make sure your fill layer is selected and then apply the gradient. The cool part is that you can always come back and change the gradient. It even can be applied to pixel layers, taking into consideration a selection you have. In contrast to a fill layer, when applied to a pixel layer, the gradient will be rasterized and can no longer be changed after it has been applied. Another great use of the gradient tool are masks. When a mask is selected, the colors will automatically switch to black and white and you can quickly apply a fading mask. Pretty awesome! As all adjustment layers come with a built-in mask, we can also use the gradient tool with adjustments. It modifies or overrides the built-in mask of the adjustment. Here I have an HSL adjustment being applied to the image and by using the gradient tool, I can quickly control where the effect of the HSL adjustment is going to be applied and gradually fade the adjustment. Most of the time you will use the on-screen controls to modify the gradient, like direction and color. However, for a precise control, you can open up the fill properties from the toolbar while the gradient tool is selected. In this pop-up window, you can exactly set the positions of the colors and the midpoints. It also even allows you to add points and reverse the colors. By the way, to reverse the colors you don't need to open up this pop-up window. You can also use the shortcut in the toolbar. There is also a button in the toolbar to rotate the gradient in 90 degrees. As we saw earlier, the type of the gradient can be changed from the toolbar too. The toolbar also has a Maintain Fill Aspect Ratio toggle. This setting only affects the ellipse and the bitmap gradients. I will demonstrate the use of it in a second. But first, let's take a look at the first drop-down on the toolbar. By default, the gradient applies to the fill of the object. But this can be changed to Stroke. And like magic, we have a stroke with a gradient. Which I think is pretty cool. As I mentioned, the gradient tool also allows bitmaps. It then acts like a pattern fill using a bitmap image. When we choose bitmap from the drop-down, it will pop up with a file open dialog where we can choose the pattern image to be used. The bitmap we selected is now used to fill the object and adjusting the size and rotation is pretty straightforward with the on-screen controls. When a bitmap is set as the fill type, we do get some additional options in the toolbar and one of them is the scale with object checkbox. When this is turned off, the fill pattern will maintain its size and will not be resized when the object is resized. The maintain fill aspect ratio toggle also now plays a role. When turned off, the used bitmap can be resized without any restrictions. By the way, you can always hold the control key to override this toggle. Here is a pro tip for you. If you don't want to use the file open dialog, you can also drag and drop the image to your canvas. While the image is selected, right click to open up the context menu and select convert to curve. The image layer will now be converted to a rectangle with the image being automatically converted to a fill. When I switch to the gradient tool, notice how the fill has the image we dragged and dropped on the image. If you want to apply this bitmap fill to a different object, you can copy this object, select the new object and then use the edit paste style menu. Easy peasy. Because this is a bitmap fill, I can now modify it with the gradient tool. It may look strange, but this is because the extent type is set to repeat. We can change this to Warp 
to get the default behavior. When you do not have the perfect repeating bitmap, you can try to use the mirror for the extent type. This usually gets better results. There is also a zero extent type. When selected, the image will not be repeated in any manner. However, you can still rotate and resize it. The final tip for today is that you can save your gradients. If you are only interested in saving the used colors and the gradient type, you can use the swatches panel and add the gradient from the selected object to your color palette. The cool part is that you can also save a bitmap fill this way. The main disadvantage, and I kind of mentioned it, the only thing that will be saved this way are the colors and the gradient type. So, for example, when I apply the first gradient from our palette, notice how the gradient looks off. Same for the second palette item. To show you that bitmaps also work, let's finally apply the last item from our palette. And we do get a bitmap fill. Pretty awesome. A better way to save the gradient is to save it as a style. When we turn on the Styles panel, we can use the Add Style from the Selection Context menu and the gradient is now saved in our Style category. When I add a new circle and apply the style by clicking on it, notice now that not only the color and the gradient type is applied, but also the other gradient properties are applied to the new circle. Pretty nice. This wraps up this video and I do hope you liked this video. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Wishing you all the best and until the next video.